Hi friends, my name's Roger Osborne. I've been gardening for probably longer than I've been fishing. It's been a major passion of my life. And a little while ago, I made a video, the A to Z of building a wicking bed. They're fantastic. Now today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of my wicking beds and also teach you some things that I've learnt and also some of the pitfalls that I've found. So I'm sure it's gonna be a great benefit to you. Also, I have an amazing passion fruit vine that's just giving me a little bit of trouble at the moment. It's laden with fruit, but it's dropping some of the fruit. And maybe some of you guys know about passion fruit. I certainly would appreciate the help. Make sure you put it in the comments, but in a little while, we're gonna head over there and have a look at the passion fruit vine as well. But now I'm gonna show you how my wicking beds are going. So in this first pod, I've planted some uh, corn. And what I've done is I've companion planted some climbing beans. You can see here that the bean is starting to weave its way up around the corn. Uh, this corn has only been going for a relatively short period of time, but it's looking pretty good. And the beans are certainly doing their thing and wrapping around the corn. And the bean, beans produce nitrogen, which the corn loves. So they're actually a great uh, partnership, growing the beans and the corn together. Also in this bed, I had grown some rocket, but we harvested uh, all of the rocket. I've left the, the bottom parts of the rocket in there. And I also planted some yellow squash. So these yellow squash are starting to come up. I've had a few challenges with snails. Uh, so you can see I've got some snail pellets that I've put in around here. There's probably a few dead snails. And there's one here, it's a dead snail there. Another one, another one there. He's been eating the pellets and he's shriveled up. I'm very happy about that. And uh, so I've got my corn going there. I'll get the yellow squash happening. We've been harvesting spinach. Oh, this has probably been growing here for about six months. We just, it grows so quick. And this is the variety that has the different colored um, leaves. You've got some which are yellow, uh, some of these lovely red ones, a little bit beetrooty, and then some of your normal white, more your, your white colored spinach. These ones are probably nearly finished. I mean, I'm going to get a little bit more out of them, but we love our spinach. My wife likes to make smoothies and she blends the spinach up in the smoothies. Uh, super healthy. And then over here, also in the same uh, wicking bed, I've got some celery, which is actually um, coming along really well. We really should start eating it, actually. So this celery is looking super healthy. Yeah, so I'll have to replace that spinach soon, but very happy with the celery. Now up the end here, this is kind of like a, an amazing mixture of herbs in this end uh, wicking bed. You can see I've got fennel growing up here. I've got some parsley, which is getting towards the end of its life. It's starting to go to seed. Look at my beautiful thyme down here. This is so lush and healthy. It's actually spreading all the way through the wicking, wicking bed here. It's a little bit like a rainforest. And then even hiding underneath here, there's some mint down there. Then over, I'll just move this rosemary out of the way. Over the back here, you can see there's um, oregano that's really flourishing in here. I need to pick some of that oregano because um, just to sort of prune it back a bit so it keeps growing. And then of course, I've got this lovely rosemary bush. And I like cooking big paellas and the rosemary goes fantastic in paella. Also, with all of these herbs that we're growing, we're sort of getting into drying herbs because we don't want to waste any of the herbs and you can make some fantastic homemade medicines and ointments and different things using dried herbs. So we're sort of learning a little bit about that and enjoying that. So now I'm going to head across to one of my other gardens. I've just built a new raised garden bed which um, I did with a friend of mine over a couple of days. That was awesome. Very happy with how it turned out. And then we ordered some soil from the local uh, nursery. Quite a lot actually, because this um, raised bed is six meters long by, by 1.2 meters wide. So it's a really solid bed. It should be able to grow. I'll be able to grow heaps of yummy things in here. But I had some challenges, uh, which I, you're always learning things in the garden, uh, making mistakes, that's how you learn. Um, so I sowed a number of different things into this raised bed. I had some leftover seed potatoes, which I put in here. Uh, these ones are actually a Desiree potato. And the smaller ones at the end, these are, are Kifler, Kifler potatoes. And I've also planted some marigolds 
in between because flowers are fantastic for vegetable gardens. They attract insects which are really good for deterring pests and things like ladybirds which are awesome. They eat aphids and uh, so as many helpful friends in the garden is really good. So with this garden, yeah, I've had some challenges. I didn't realise when I, when I bought the soil that I've since learnt by talking to a few uh, people at the garden centre that it's best not to plant in new soil immediately but to let it settle for about a month or so and let everything work its way through. I planted immediately. <laughs> as soon as I put the soil in here, I was keen to get it going. So, however, I did mix in some organic material, um, some, you know, some chook manure and different things just to put a few nutrients in there. I planted a whole bunch of seeds in here and they came up very quickly, but then they really suffered and they went kind of like a, a yellowy color and I could tell wasn't looking good. So I actually then went and bought a, a soil pH test kit um, and we tested the soil and we found out that it was highly alkaline which was not good and not certainly not good for vegetables. So um, normally you can treat alkaline soil with sulphur or you can also put white vinegar uh, in water and I've done a little bit of that. These plants look pretty bad. Like you can see these zucchinis, they're just, they were actually looking much worse than that. Um, and I'd thrown a few random flower seeds in here as well. Uh, that's what all these things are. Because I'd, plant, I'd planted the four zucchinis here because when zucchinis grow, they grow quite large. One zucchini plant is like, you know, this big normally. Uh, when you're a gardener, it's, you know, it's frustrating and disappointing, you know, because you're so excited about seeing things grow when things don't necessarily go your way. So I have actually put um, white vinegar into water and it has improved. I saw these plants green up pretty quickly within a day or so when I did the white vinegar thing. The ratio that you use is three tablespoons of uh, white vinegar to four litres of water. So your average watering can is nine litres. So I was putting six tablespoons of vinegar into my nine litre watering can and it has made a difference. And probably if I did it again, it would help them. But I'm actually thinking of starting again, digging this through and just replanting because um, yeah, this, this is a lesson that I've learnt. So I had the um, zucchinis in here. Then I planted some eggplant these little ones, that's actually um, a little eggplant coming up there. There's a couple couple that are here, eggplants that were coming up. Um, but you can see they're, they're pretty stunted. Not exactly what you'd call luxuriant, healthy eggplants. Um, and we planted a plant called yarrow over the back, which is an amazing uh, plant that you find in the Aussie bush, bush and it also has amazing medicinal purposes and great for attracting good bugs to the garden as well. Over here, these were just, I had a packet of mixed flowers like a cottage garden mix that I threw in because I was intending to plant a few flowers in amongst the vegetables to attract all the, the right sorts of insects and um, yeah I'm going to dig them up. Unfortunately, I might be able to salvage a few. You can see there's a few different ones. Some of them I don't actually know what they are, these plants. I, you can see there's a couple of marigolds in there. There's like a little marigold there. There's another marigold in there. Uh, a few different sorts of um, goodies in here. Here I planted some bell capsicums. So you can see they've, they've grown up, but they're not really that healthy. I planted a few rows of those. Then of course some tomatoes, and even the tomatoes were struggling in this particular garden bed. I had planted two rows of red onions. Some of the onions came up, and I can probably salvage these little onions and do something with them. And then of course this is beetroot here. It's actually, it should be way bigger than this by now. This beetroot should be four times this size. Um, I don't like wasting time. <laughs> I've wasted probably a good six weeks, but I have learned some valuable lessons. So, um, you know, and it's still springtime, so I've got heaps of growing, growing season ahead. So I'm just going to revitalize this um, raised bed and move on. So now we're going to have a look at my 
passion fruit vine that I mentioned earlier, it's fant it, this vine's only been in for about 15 months. It's grown huge and it's laden with fruit. But only in the last week or so, we've noticed how the new growth, you can see how the leaves are kind of all sort of curled up and not doing the normal thing that it should look like, should be looking much healthier than that. And also a number of passion fruit, not big ones, smaller ones have, have been dropping off the vine. So if you know anything about passion fruit vines, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, we're just trying to troubleshoot and find out what the issue is, why this is like this. One of my thinkings is that, that there's so much fruit on this vine that the vines wanted, cons wanted to conserve its nutrients for the fruit and it's not putting the effort into all of these new shoots, but I, I'm not sure. So we'll just walk along and have a look at the vine. You can see there's lots of um, fruit coming here uh, and you'll see as we go along further um, and get down to this other part here. I mean, there's obviously a, a number of normal sized passion fruits growing here, heaps of flowers on the vine. And then as we move down here, You'll see also the situation where these end branches are really very stunted and not growing properly. There's still lots of fruit, lots of new fruit coming on, uh, lots of decent sized fruit in the middle. I mean really there's fruit everywhere, some really healthy looking sized um, passion fruit. If you look all the way through this vine, there's fruit, it's totally laden. And you can see how big this vine is and how much fruit's on it. This has only been growing for about 15 months. All of this growth, I planted it in springtime last year and we're, we're in springtime now, so really it's probably not even 15 months. It's probably one year old, this, this vine. So I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the fact that it's got heaps of nice passion fruits on it, but I'm not very happy about some of these end branches which are really suffering. So yeah, I'd really appreciate some help if you know something about it. Uh, it's good to be able to help each other. So now I am going to move from the passion fruit vine to my other wicking beds. In the video I made, I made three wicking beds. I have another five, which have got some fantastic things growing in them. So we're gonna go and have a look. So this is my other batch of wicking beds that I built previously to the other ones that I built when I made the video. And at the moment here, I've got a lovely harvest of leeks growing in here. I actually picked some of these leeks. So I picked a couple off the, the end here last night and fried them up with a bit of butter, salt and pepper, and I actually had, some, had them with some corned beef that we made. It was yummy. Um, so anyway, I've got all these leeks here, which is uh, really cool, uh, growing happily there. So we're gonna gradually just harvest them as we need them and enjoy them. There's certainly a lot there. There's a little sweet potato coming up here from a previous crop, sneaking his head up there. And then over in the middle is actually a potato, because I grew potatoes in this bed before. You can see there's a, a potato coming up here in the middle of the leeks. It's got a, a ladybug, a lady, lady, but maybe I can get that little, no, I'm going to leave him on there. I don't, I don't want to disturb that ladybug in there. Also, um, I'm growing some potatoes in containers. So I've got a whole row of containers here with potatoes in them. And these will be ready to harvest soon. So as these leaves start to die off, I can harvest them. I've got, these ones here are Kifla potatoes. And then on the other end, I've got a bunch which are called White Star. Uh, also, I've just got a bunch of other things in here in pots. These shallots, I've got a lot of shallots who, that were actually growing in one of these other beds, but I wanted to plant something else. So I took all the shallots out and put them in some pots because we just gradually eat the shallots. Uh, they're going to seed now as well, which is great because I'd like to harvest some of the seeds for these shallots to use for future plantings. Um, in this bed over here, I've just put a couple of things in recently. I've got a few lettuce and I was just coming out here before I thought someone's attacked my lettuce. But that was actually my wife, she made a salad at lunchtime and she, and she cut some of the leaves off the outside so it spoiled my look. But anyways, I've got a few lettuce there. Uh, this is just a little bit of coriander I put in yesterday actually. I've got one lone tomato growing there. This, this particular tomato is uh, a grossless variety. We used to grow uh, grossless when I was a kid. My father always had a big vegetable garden and I remember when I was like eight and ten years old 
My father's favourite tomato was, was Gros Lis, and they grow really quite big. So this is just a bit of a random planting, and over here, I've only just recently put these in. These eggplant are actually climbing eggplant, so that's why I've got this trellis here, so that the, uh, these eggplant can climb up over this trellis. So there's a couple of different things here. As we use those lettuce, I just plant some more. You'll be able to see down here um, where I've got my release valves for the wicking beds. You can see that the water level is up to the top. So if I actually want to drain some of that off or lower the amount of water in the wicking bed, I can just tip that over like that and let that drain out. But as you know, we've all had a lot of rain. Both of, both of those are... So you can tell by that that the level of water in the reservoir underneath is level with the top of that pipe. So basically from there down is, um, is water in there with the, with the piping, etc. And you can see I've got my pipes for each one of these wicking beds here where I can water it. When I go away, I can pop my hose in the pipe, make sure that there's plenty of water in the bed and then go, go away if I want to go for a little trip, knowing the plants are going to be well looked after. This particular one here, I only planted these about five days ago. These are rock, this is rocket. You can see why they call it rocket, because this has been literally five days since I planted these seeds. And what I planted here is, is I've done a row of rocket, then, in, then I've done here, see the tiny little ones coming up here. There's a couple starting to poke their heads through here. This is a row of Similar lettuce to what we just looked at, some mixed lettuce, some red variety, green variety. So what I've done is I've done a row of rocket, a row of um, normal lettuce, and there's another row of rocket here. I've done four rows of, two rows of rocket and two rows of um, mixed lettuce. Then over the back is, um, this is um, telegraph cucumber, which is only relatively young. You can see there's a couple of little baby cucumbers hiding in just in under here. There's uh, a couple little ones down there that are starting to form, those cucumbers. So these two, uh, there's two plants there, they'll work their way up this trellis and then dangle over the other side and probably just keep going. But um, we love eating telegraph cucumbers, so they're really cool. Um, then, this is a bit of a you know, it's not just one type of vegetable I've had growing in here. Obviously, I've got some more spinach. Some of it is starting to go to seed. We, we had so much spinach, we couldn't keep up with it. So we're going to need to make a few more smoothies and uh, just wilt some spinach with some garlic and stuff would be really good. I've got a couple of Brussels sprouts here, but um, we've had a little bit of a problem with the aphids. You can see on this particular Brussels sprout up the top here, it's um, got some aphids on there. And then down the bottom it was being attacked by, um, you can see it's unfortunately, it's, uh, it's been attacked by the snails down there. It's actually nailed a whole heap of snails. But I'm, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to leave it in there and just look after it, deal with the aphids, deal with the snails, and hopefully I'll still get a few um, Brussels sprouts from those and eat that spinach. And then... Around in this one I've planted some more fennel. So I've got some fennel growing here. We like eating fennel in our salads and different things. Um, I did grow potatoes in this bed before, so you can see there's uh, you know, a few, few potatoes still shooting. And then I've got some eggplant here. This is just your standard variety eggplant. You can see there's a flower coming on there, another flower coming on there. So this is uh, just really hasn't started fruiting yet. And then I was growing a few beans around here as well. I've harvested a lot of them. You can see this, there's a few little beans lying around. There's some more flowers coming. I didn't pull them out. I just gave them some liquid fertilizer and it looks like they're going again. There's a whole bunch more um, flowers coming on those dwarf beans. So it's worthwhile leaving them in there a little bit longer. And then you can see from the other end here, all of my um, potatoes that I've got growing in the pots. 
So I'm looking forward to eating my own fish and chips, catching my own fish and making my own chips. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at this video. Actually, there's something else I need to show you. Don't forget about the seaweed. If you live near the ocean, seaweed is a fantastic fertilizer and we often pick it up when we're down at the beach. That garden bed, which has got the baby lettuce starting to come through, has got a whole bunch of seaweed that I buried underneath. It's probably about that far underneath and I've planted the lettuce on top, but when that's all breaking down, and I know there's a lot of worms in that wicking bed, so, you know, that lettuce might benefit from it, but very soon whatever's planted in there is just gonna go nuts because of that seaweed. I've got some seaweed here in a bucket. You can see here, you can see there's, your, there's the seaweed there with its doobies on it. I'll just pick that up. So I'm making some seaweed tea. It doesn't look that edible for humans. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> but um, it's great when you put a bit of that in your watering can with, you know, you just put a couple of slurps of that in with your water and then water your plants, they love it. So I can, highly, I can highly recommend the seaweed either for burying in your garden or making seaweed tea. So um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tour and that you perhaps learned a couple of things. And also I'm looking forward to hearing your comments about the passion fruit and make sure that you like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon.